Fox 61 News at 10 starts now. A Fox 61 exclusive stories of survival and tragedy. The emotional journey of a Connecticut man who's helping Floridians recover from Hurricane Ian. Plus, a fight on the final day of a fall festival will tell you what resulted in the arrest of a teen and why more arrests are possible. And it was a day for the dogs. We'll show you what had pooches getting pampered and Fido getting fed at this annual event, which is growing in popularity. Good evening and thanks for joining us on the Fox 61 News at 10. I'm Matt Karen. We begin tonight with a Fox 61 exclusive. A Middletown High School teacher stepped away from the classroom to give his time and energy to help those most affected by Hurricane Ian. He's volunteering at a Fort Myers hospital and his students are pitching in too. Tonight he spoke only to Fox 61's Tony Black, who joins us here in the studio with a look at his emotional journey. Yeah, Matt, just over a week ago, Middletown teacher David Cruikshank reached Florida to help the Fort Myers area recover from Hurricane Ian. It's been an emotional trip, but he says the moral support he gets from his students here in Connecticut has helped him get by, along with the information they're getting him. It's been sobering. Fort Myers, Florida and surrounding areas are still faced with the aftermath of Hurricane Ian, which made landfall a week and a half ago as a Category 4 storm. More than 100 people in the state have died. As Floridians rebuild and regroup, they have the rest of the country there to respond. We set up an emergency room basically outside of the emergency room at Gulf Coast Medical Center to help handle the surge of patients. David Cruikshank has been assisting a Fort Myers hospital since late September. The Middletown teacher is a part of the National Disaster Medical System, a federal partnership called to help after powerful storms hit. He's joined by dozens of doctors, nurses, and other medical professionals to help the influx of people needing care. Uh, we've been seeing um, basically your post-storm uh, medical injuries, so with some chainsaw injuries, um, some, um, you know, general cleanup uh, cuts from glass. Serving as the safety coordinator for the Connecticut Disaster Medical Assistance Team, CT1, he says Floridians are overwhelmed by the nationwide support. Some of that support is coming from Vinyl Tech High in Middletown, where 35 of his students are collecting and sharing information to help their remote team. They're listening to the local uh, police station frequencies, the ambulance frequencies. Um, so, uh, you know, they'll text me that, Hey, there was an incident down the street, just so you're aware. The students send over a 26-page report full of info daily. The support is helpful for operations, but also for Crookshank's motivation. They understand the gravity of what's going on down here, uh, which is says a lot for high school students. Crookshank shared these photos of the wind and water damage. The long days are the most exhausting for him. The teacher pushes through, though, because soon he'll come back to Connecticut and his home. But many in Florida will remain without one. And that's, I think, another reason why we're so happy to be down here is to help however we can. Crookshank says he wants to make sure the hospital feels like they were helped when he leaves to come back to Connecticut. And it's not just the community members they're supporting, but also the hospital staff who have lost a lot too. While it's been hard, it's been rewarding to help others in a difficult time for him and his students in Middletown. In the studio, Tony Black, Fox 61 News. All right, Tony, thanks very much. And now we turn to the weather watch on what turned out to be a really nice sunny Sunday. Meteorologist Ryan Breton joining us now to talk about what we can expect for the week ahead. Hi, Ryan. Hey, Matt. Kind of tough to see a weekend as nice as this one come to an end. And we have some fall color really showing up here in southern New England. This is from Ellington this afternoon. See the leaves starting to turn there. And of course, this morning it was really chilly, which means at this time last night it was fairly chilly as well. But it's warmer right now by 11 degrees in Windsor Locks, where it's 53, 55 in New Haven, where at 47 in Willimantic and Putnam. It will not be as cold tonight as it was last night. This morning, many of us waking up to frost, but we have some clouds coming in and there's a front nearby, so we won't chill off as much as we did last night. But some places will dip into the 30s. Willimantic to Putnam, maybe a couple of the coolest towns have some frost first thing. 40s in the cities and along the shoreline first thing in the morning. I do think we'll have some clouds in the morning, so not bright and sunny like it was this morning.
morning, but we'll have some breaks of sun developing a little bit warmer tomorrow up into the mid 60s with just a chance for an isolated shower in the afternoon and evening, especially in northern Connecticut. Central and southern Connecticut should stay dry through the day tomorrow. Really good stretch of weather as we head into the middle of the week and then some rain will catch up with us. We'll time it all out coming up in just a little while. All right, uh, thanks, Ryan. One of Connecticut's most popular fall fairs wrapped up today, but not without becoming the scene of a police incident. A fight broke out at the Southington apple harvest yesterday. Uh, police say multiple young people were involved. It happened in front of Anthony Jacks on Center Street. The fight led to the arrest of at least one juvenile, but Southington police say that more people may be arrested. We're aware of the incident that happened last year, and as a result of that, we received a grant through our STEPS program to add more coverage. So what we did, we brought in extra officers to specifically patrol for the issues that we've had with some of the juveniles. And it's just, it's generally that they're coming down here to enjoy the festival, but you know, juveniles being juveniles, things got escalated last night or, you know, heated and it resulted in a fight. Now, as you just heard, this is the second year in a row that police were called to the festival. Last October, a 16-year-old boy was stabbed in the stomach after a fight outside Town Hall. Despite this incident, people told Fox 61 they do feel safe at the festival. I would never not feel safe down here. There's always police walking around up through the crowds where all the food is, all through the crafts. I definitely feel 100% safe being Same down here. here. I have no issues coming here at all. Stuff happens. Yeah. You know, and that's unfortunate, but from an overall safety standpoint, it's been really good. The Southington Apple Harvest, of course, home to the famous Apple Fritter, draws thousands of people there to the downtown, bringing in a steady stream of revenue for businesses during the two-week event. Scary moments for some elderly nursing home residents when a fire alarm went off in the early morning hours. Rocky Hill Fire Chief Michael Garrahy told Fox 61 a fire alarm started sounding at the Maple View Manor Nursing Home on Maple Street at about 2.45 a.m. The firefighters got there. They noticed some smoke in the kitchen, which was eventually traced back to a kitchen vent fan. The fire was quickly put out without any injuries. Community advocates are speaking out tonight in the wake of recent violence in the capital city. This as Hartford police continue to investigate a shooting that left one man injured Saturday afternoon, as well as the city's 30th homicide of the year this past week. In response, the brother Carl Hardrick Institute for Violence Prevention and Community Engagement is working directly in communities to make a difference. The Resource Center is training neighbors as violence prevention professionals who can work with victims, families, and perpetrators. There's young people, 90% of them know what's going to happen before it happens. But they don't know who to turn to. They don't know who cares. They don't know who they can trust. And there's not enough of us out there. Yeah, our community has to come up out of despair. And so changing the quality of life, raising what we say the EQ and not just the IQ of our children, the Institute is also working to establish positive youth development programs to empower and support young people. And staying in the capital city, now the flags are at half staff today in commemoration of the National Fallen Firefighters Memorial Service. It's a day meant to honor the sacrifices of firefighters who have died in the line of duty. This observance is meant to coincide with the National Fire Prevention Week. An American hero was honored today in East Haven, Corporal Frank Massimino. A veteran of the United States Army who served in Korea posthumously received four medals. They were presented to his family by Congresswoman Rosa DeLauro. Corporal Massimino sadly passed away in 2017 at the age of 85, but his family made sure that his sacrifice and service was not soon forgotten. What this is about is the memory and the preservation of the service of Corporal, it was a Corporal Frank Massimino, his service during the Korean War. His family was presented with these medals commemorating his service to national defense, the war in Korea, the United Nations, and the Republic of Korea.
Well, the storm of criticism facing Wyndham Hospital will continue tomorrow when Senator Richard Blumenthal will stand with nurses to call for better working conditions there. The hospital is being accused of low pay, understaffed shifts, mandatory overtime, and an inadequate health care plan. About 100 nurses went on strike in September, and now another labor union is threatening a strike. The 130-bed acute care hospital is owned by Hartford HealthCare. Temperatures are dropping, the leaves are changing, and the fall season is still underway. Check out uh, this one here that took, uh, took the place in Blueback Square in West Hartford. Uh, they're calling it the Fall into Blue Black, Blueback Market Festival. Attendees were treated to a wide range of homemade goods, perfect for the fall season. There was also kids' entertainment, live music, arts and crafts all afternoon. And take a look at this. Thrill seekers across the East Coast were invited to bring their furry companions to the second annual Dog Toberfest at Lake Compounds today. It was part of the park's all new Phantom Fall Fest event. There was also a pet costume contest where the winner got a gift basket stuffed with treats, toys, and other pooch specific rewards. Some really good looking dogs there. Uh, people were also encouraged to bring donations for the Merit and Humane Society. Oh, oh boy, the whipped cream, look at that. All proceeds from pup cups were sold throughout the day and were donated to that organization.